Well, actually, there's no footage. Some footage of it still remains, but we didn't save the programs. We didn't save tapes. Uh, there was no reason back in the 70s or 80s to save your program because uh, you expected to be there forever. And so, you know, a lot of it's gotten away. But uh, oddly enough, I have a gentleman that works with me uh, out of West Virginia that has found a cotton uh, a bevy, a huge stack, maybe as many as three years of continental wrestling from a guy in England. And I don't know how they got to England, but uh, there's about to be some on the on the horizon here that are going to be sold, and uh, they're piecing it together now. I'm a part of that, trying to help them put it together properly. And I think a lot of people who have never seen that program before will probably be pretty amazed at the talent that was there and the, and the type of things we were doing back in those days. That is awesome. That is good news, and that's great to hear. I kind of want to see some of that footage maybe leak its way out to YouTube or, or wherever we so people can enjoy it and fans can see it because the, the stud stable is something that fans are going to love, and maybe they've heard of NWCW, but the original stud stable was something you know created in Continental, What's the, the history of, of the formation of the stud stable? Well, uh, that all goes back to one of those those uh, deals that we did with Bob and I, and uh, he he uh, he he really uh, messed me up and tore my knee. Him and uh, Flair in a match in Mobile in 1982, and after that, I was out for a while. Took my leg, took my knee a while to get well, and once I came back. Uh, Bob had turned heel at that point, and uh, that it made me. I was a. Uh, I was the opposite at that point. They hadn't liked me, but then they did like me. And uh, if I formed a stable, I just said, "Hey, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna wrestle every night because I have knee problems. So I'm going to have my own stable." And I put together quite a group of guys. There are some really, really talented guys. Uh, humongous. I don't know if you've ever seen that guy. Lord oh, yeah. us. he was there. Uh, Arn Anderson was in my stable. Jimmy Golden was in my stable. Uh, I had I had a tremendous group of guys there that wrestled for me, basically underneath me, and uh, that was a great run. There was really a, a time frame there, probably eighty four, eighty five, in which we were drawing some of the biggest crowds in America and doing tremendous business and. And some of that, that footage is available. In fact, uh, I've looked over some of this footage. It's been coming out of England, and and there's a lot of that that stud stable stuff that are that's going to be available, and people will be able to to take a look finally and see what Continental was all about. So cool, you know. If if you're a real good old school fan of wrestling, you will love Continental. There's so many good hot angles so many great names, so many great wrestlers from that territory, so many cool characters, and perhaps none bigger physically than a guy like Andre the Giant, and I know you have a lot of good stories from him. I don't want to take away from the stud cast at all because I know there's a big Andre the Giant um, two-parter coming out on him, but can you just share just a little bit of, of bringing Andre into Continental? Oh, yeah. Well, Con Andre started working for me when I was in Knoxville originally in, with Southeastern. And that's the first time he came and did much for me. Uh, Andre came over a period of years, wrestled in that company, wrestled in that southern division out of Pensacola. He wrestled in Continental for me. Uh, and I've, I've got a super stud cast coming out on Sunday. I think it's going to be Sunday. It's going to break out on the 14th of January to our just about Andre, an entire two hours on Andre. I've never done one of these before. And Andre and I were personal friends for 16 years. I just really love Andre. He was just like a, like a brother to me. And uh, I'd kind of do a tribute for him. Uh, he's a fantastic and phenomenal, not just a talent, but a great person and a great guy, too. And uh, so, yeah, he worked for me a whole bunch of different times, and, and I always enjoyed being with him. He, a lot of times I, he would stay in my home. When he'd come to work for me, I would just bring him home, and, you know, I would take him on the road with me, and uh, he'd travel with me in these vans. I'd have conversion vans and 
stuff that fit him properly, and he loved coming and being with me. Uh, I got a lot of great Andre stories, all of them in this Super Stud cast. I mean, I didn't leave any of them out. Uh, Andre is just a phenomenal, phenomenal topic, and I just really enjoyed that, that two hours. That is great. I don't want to take away too much uh, from that, but that is something definitely that fans should uh, want to listen to and look out for. Now, as far as the Armstrongs and the Fullers, if I can just go back to them for a second, I know they had you guys had the big blow-away match, the big steel cage match, and the Armstrongs kind of come away with the win. But who would you say really won that feud between the Armstrongs and the Fullers, or did it never really end? I don't think it ever really ended be honest with you, I don't think it had a very, it didn't have a clear ending if there was an ending. Uh, I quit in 1988. Uh, the Bobbin obviously continued. He's still out there doing it. And uh, so the boys obviously continued doing it. Uh, but about that same time, we closed Continental and they kind of, everybody went their separate ways. Rob and Jimmy went to work out of, out of, um, Memphis and uh, was working quite a bit with Yvonne Erics in Texas and things changed dramatically after Continental shut down but uh, it was it, it never really had an ending. You couldn't say well we were the better group or they were the better group. Uh, it's just uh, I think what we managed to do is we managed to have two families that feuded for at least a six or seven year straight period uh, practically every week there was something else different going on and managed to keep our audience and build our audience at the same time. Uh, pretty hard to do that with uh, with the same group of guys. It's very, very difficult to do that. But we had happened to all be pretty decent workers, and uh, and we had great storyline, and we had, we had a lot of things going on. We entertained people probably as good or better than any promotion in the country. Such a great lost territory that people really need to start, you know, developing more time and really looking into so much great stuff. But when you were there, what was your favorite part? Did you like the writing, the booking, the producing TV, the house shows, wrestling? What was your kind of favorite aspect of being in charge of Continental? I just, I always just loved the entire business. I loved every bit of it. I loved the wrestling and going in the ring. I loved having a good match. I loved the the booking. I love figuring what's going to happen and, and, and just blowing people's minds and, and trying to stay two steps ahead, not one ahead, but two steps ahead of the average fan where they go, wow, I wouldn't, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. So, you know, that part of it was great. I love the television in my first company in Southeastern Championship Wrestling in Knoxville. I probably had the most inventive and creative wrestling program in America. I was the first one to ever do instant replays. I was the first one to do split screen. I did all kinds of deals with that program and with that. So I liked every part of it. It was always the wrestling business was so interesting to me. And I guess that's from growing up in it and, and just riding up and down the road, just a great life. It was a phenomenal life and riding up and down the roads and talking business and and being around people that you like and you admire and and having fun and laughing it, it was a it's you know it, nothing is better than that nothing's better than being a being a wrestler in a territory that's on fire doing great business and everybody in that dressing room getting along 